There is one particular probability distribution for a continuous variables which is extremely important. It's called the normal distribution. The density function, the probability density function, looks like this. This is x, and we get the famous bell-shaped curve going down to zero on either side eventually. That's the normal distribution. It applies to all sorts of variables, and it's saying essentially that the most probable value of the variable is in the middle, and then as you go further out in either direction from the middle, the probability decreases. So it applies, for example, to heights of a population. Most people are near the middle. There are a few very tall people, a few very short people. And all sorts of things that can be measured have a normal distribution. So we need to be able to work out the probabilities by finding the areas. Unfortunately, the formula for the density function for f of x is actually very complicated, but you don't need to know it. We've said before that you find areas by integrating, but in fact this function is so complicated it cannot be exactly integrated. So books of tables have been produced which enable us to find out the area. And an example, when the variable is 0.34, the area to the left is 0.6331. That tells us that the probability that x is less than 0.34 is the area to the left of 0.34. That probability is, let's say, 63%, 63.31%. So you need to be able to look up normal distribution tables. They're in any statistical book. This axis is sometimes called z and you look up the value of z, and then it will tell you the area to the left. There are some uh, fairly standard results. If we go to one either side of the middle, so from minus one to plus one, the area is 68% or 0.68 and in fact this measure the unit along the um, x-axis is the standard deviation so if there's a, st a standard deviation of one the probability of being within one standard deviation of the mean is 68% two-thirds of the population roughly are within one standard deviation of the mean and we can similarly look at what happens for two standard deviations either side of the mean and we then get the percentage of 95% or 0.95 95% of the population are within two standard deviations of the mean and if we go to three standard deviations There's almost nobody outside because we get 99.7% within plus or minus three standard deviations. So there's hardly anybody outside. In fact, 0.3 of a percent of the population are outside. Now this is called the standard normal distribution because it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Most populations don't. The, po the uh, po male population uh, might have a mean of 5.8, uh, sorry, 5 feet 8 inches um, tall, with a standard deviation, say, of uh, 4 inches. So we need to be able to relate that to the standard normal distribution so that we can use the standard tables. And we do that in the following way. Suppose we have a population 
suppose a population has a mean mu equal to let's say 160 and the standard deviation which is usually labelled Greek letter sigma and we'll say 20. What's the probability that within that population uh, the value is less than 190? So what we have here is this scenario now, the mean is 160 and sigma, which is the measure of spread, the standard deviation is 20, so it's going to look something like that. And we want to know what's the probability of being less than 190. What's this area? So, we want the probability that x is less than 190. And what we have to do is recalibrate this uh, distance in terms of standard deviations. We normally go over to the z variable when we're talking about the standard normal distribution. And we convert to a z variable by subtracting the mean so we take away 160 and we divide by the standard deviation. In other words, we're saying, how many standard deviations am I from the mean? In this case, I'm 30 units away. One standard deviation is 20 units. So I'm actually one and a half standard deviations away. And that's what I then look up in the tables. Z less than or equal to 1.5 and that comes out to be 0.9332. So for that particular distribution with a mean of 160, standard deviation of 20, the chance of being less than 190 is 0.9332 and so if I wanted then the chance of being above 190 it would be 1 minus this and that would be about 7%. We simply take this away from 1. That's how we work out normal probabilities from the table of the standard normal distribution. OK, Marie, so let's have a look at this one. So solve x plus 2x equals 12. So what do you think you do first? OK, well, I want x on its own, so I would put x equals 12 minus 2x. Okay, so a lot of the time we want to get x by itself, but what we want to do first is get all of these x's together, so can you see anything we can do with this? Get all these together in one place. Oh, okay, it's 3x, isn't it? Yeah, so absolutely. 3x equals 12. Oh, and so x equals 4. Brilliant, spot on, well done.